Hey guys, what's up? This is Captain J back with another video. So earlier in the week, I made a Xbox One 360 Mod 101. And on it, I did talk about all the stuff that you needed to do to start modding yourself. Now, I did also promise in that video that I would make a part two. So here I am keeping that promise and doing just that. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we start, I do want to let you know if you did make the decision to go ahead and buy your RGH console from Tony Mondello, a lot of the following steps will already be done. The files will already be included within the RGH console and I think about 99% of everything will already be, in other words, ready for you. So all you have to do is, in other words, plug in and play. There might be one thing that you have to do to set up either the KV or completely finishing setting up the stealth server that Tan Mandelo gives you within uh, the RGH. He gives you 30 days on his stealth server. So, um, before we go on, I am going to, in other words, give you a list of the stuff that Tony Mondello already includes within the RGH console. So if you want to skip this, and if you already have a still server, uh, mod menus, and everything else, go ahead and skip to what's shown on the screen right now. So like I said, this is only for the Tony Mondello buyers. Whichever, whatever way you've have chosen to contact Tony Mandelo, you would most likely either have gone to his site or contact him whether it be on Facebook or YouTube. So you would have of course come into his website to purchase the console with any details that you may have been uh, wanting to add such as a controller, whether it be a fat console or a slim, black, white, any of that kind of stuff, whatever gigabytes you may have chosen. So once you have already gotten it and you have it on hand, um, of course, he is going to tell you that you need to set up the intranet or get the still server set up for the very first time. And this is what he usually has you do. Before powering on the console, of course, what you want to do is go ahead and take the hard drive off the side or the bottom of the Xbox 360 RGH and just remove the hard drive like so. Put it to the side and just leave it for a couple of minutes. Then from here, what you want to do is go ahead and power on your Xbox 360 and head over to internet settings like so. On here, you can choose either wire or wireless, whichever one you're using, then test internet connection. Of course, this is going to get failed or unable to join or failed Xbox Live. This is completely fine. Now, what you wanna do is go ahead and reinsert the hard drive onto the side of the console. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and unplug the power cord from the back of the Xbox. Then from here, you gotta let it sit for about three minutes, no less than three minutes. Tony Mandelo specifies this on his videos not to do it any less time than three minutes and let it sit there to let the capacitors drain so everything is reset once the three minutes are up of course you can go ahead and grab the power cord and then go ahead and plug it in to the back of the xbox and go ahead and power it on give it a couple of seconds to boot of course this is, could take just a little while it all depends on the console and of course your internet connection and of course, what you want to do is go ahead and download whatever gamer tag you either have or have already set up, and then you can see the time reserved on the Alliance Stealth Server. Of course, mine is zero because I already got uh, the five days, but mine is because I I was specifically asking Tony Mandelo to just let me go ahead and see the main uh, Alliance Live Stealth Server and just let me go ahead and take a look at it. So anyway, on here, of course, you can see all of the mod menus or cheats that Tony Mandelo has added to the Alliance so that way you can go ahead either able or disable whichever one you don't like or you don't want to use. 
And of course, with just about every single purchase that Tony Mandelo gets, he usually makes a video to show you the ins and outs of the RGH console. What do I mean by this? Well, he shows you every single emulator that he adds onto the RGH and usually mentions about 4,000 different ROMs that he adds to them. Of course, he also shows all of the Xbox classic games that are installed or will be installed on your console. On the homebrew, of course, he shows a whole bunch of the goodies that every single console should have at all times just to make life a little bit easier. And of course, the bread and butter of the Xbox. All of the Xbox games, whether they are arcade or of course just regular games for the Xbox 360. There's so many games that Tony Mandelo adds on to the RGA. And of course, this eases the process of you trying to download all of the games or find all of the applications, ROMs, and emulators that he already brings to you when you purchase an Xbox from him. Now moving on, this is going to be for everybody, including the people that have bought the Xbox from Tony Mandelo. All of these files will already be included if you bought them from Tony Mandelo. If you didn't, I will leave the links down in the description for you to download all of these files. There is one thing that you are going to need. This is going to be just a simple USB and it doesn't have to be that big. It can be uh, a couple of megabytes, just enough for it to hold a little bit of storage. Now, if you want to get a bigger 10, 15, 16, 20, 30, whatever you want, I do recommend getting a bigger USB just because you are going to need it in the future. Before you can use the USB, what you're going to have to do is format the USB. So what you want to do is either plug your USB to your computer or your Xbox. On the computer, what you're going to do is go down to the USB and right click on the mouse and then go up to format. And then from here, you are going to format to FAT32 or on the Xbox, go all the way to settings, go down to storage and then go to the USB, press Y and then format. Once the USB has already been formatted, here are the files that you're going to need. And of course, the application name Horizon. Don't worry, like I said, I'll leave all of these down in the description. So once you install Horizon, you're going to go ahead and run it as administrator. If you haven't plugged the USB in, go ahead and do it now. Now wait just a couple of minutes and you should be able to see right on here where it says inject the file. Then once you do this, I have all of my files on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this file specifically. Why this one? Well, this is what's called the XEX menu. The XEX menu is going to give you access to the rest of the Xbox, but I'll get to that in just a second. Let's just go ahead and inject them. Now that we have successfully injected the XEX menu, we can go ahead and close Horizon. Now we're going to go ahead and just transfer a couple of files. Oh wait, I do not need this one I already injected. So here are the three files that I'll need. I can go ahead and put in my USB. Now you do not need direct live. This is just if you happen not to have a stealth server. So in other words, it is completely optional. Now go ahead, unplug the USB and plug it into the Xbox 360 and boot up the console. Once it has booted to the main screen, what you're going to do is just go over to system settings and then you're going to go to storage from storage. Go ahead and go to USB storage device and then go to demos. And here it is XEX menu 1.1. Then what you want to do is go ahead and move it to the hard drive. Once it's done, you can go ahead and go over to games, select on games and then press on XEX menu. So I noticed while editing this video that I have put 1.1 and 1.2 right next to each other or I used the wrong one to transfer to the Xbox. So while you doing this, it's going to be 1.2, not 1.1. Just wanted to let you guys know. Now, once we are over on the XEX menu, this is the very first screen that my console comes to. So now I'm going to go ahead and press RB. This is the content on my USB. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and transfer some of the stuff over to the hard drive. So please follow along. The very first thing that I'm going to transfer will be the dash launch. To do this, I'm going to go down to dash launch, press Y, go to copy, press A, press X, change to HDD, press A, 
and now press Y and then hit paste and press A to confirm. Yeah, I know that was a little bit confusing. Don't worry, I'm going to do the same thing with Direct Live, but this time what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you all of the button configurations one by one so you can follow along. We got to make sure that we sit on the USB. If you're not, go ahead and press X and then you can go up to USB 0. Then press A and then from here we can go ahead and start. Using the D-pad, you're going to go down to Direct Live and press Y. And then you're going to go up to Copy and press A. Once you've done this, go ahead and press X and head to HDD1. And then from here, you can press Y, go down to Paste and press A. Hopefully this explanation was a lot easier to follow and you got everything already transferred. Remember, if you got it from Tony Mondello, you do not need to do any of this. So let's go ahead and continue. Now let's open up the Dash Launch. Go ahead and open Dash Launch, Installer, and Default.xex. And here is the Dash Launch. There is a lot of goodies in here. Now, one of the things that I recommend is of course going through every single one. Now you can go ahead and press on paths and see what I have set up so you can hopefully do the same thing as I have so that way you can skip a lot of the stuff that you don't need to do. Now behavior. Here are a couple of things that are on and a couple of things that are off. Like I said, pause if you need to and just look through every single one of them and make sure you kind of have the same thing that I do. Once you're done with this, we can go ahead and go to the next one. And now we have network. Here is a lot of things that could stop you from going online, such as LifeBlock and LifeStrong. You gotta make sure that you turn these off as well as HTTP. You can leave non-store on, that doesn't really do a lot of the stuff. Now of course you can go through every single one and read what it does and decide whether you wanna turn it on or off. And then once we're done with that, timers. There isn't really much important stuff in here so we can leave it and then on the plugins of course in the plugins I already have everything set up so let me go ahead and boot my specific setup for this to do so all I gotta do is press RB go to HDD press A press LB and then go down to plugins again and here you can see every single one so very briefly I will try to give you a fast explanation of what every single one of them is and what it does. The very first one is XBDM. This is going to help you connect to an application called Neighborhood, which I will get to it later. Two is Direct Live, or in other words, a Stealth Server. Three, four, and five, it's nothing but mod menus, and of course, some plugins for those mod menus, depending on what a either a Stealth Server or a mod menu asks for. And this is what I mean about the plugins. If I open my Direct Live folder, open this up and then of course go to the launch I and I on here I will go ahead and scroll down and where you're gonna be able to see is you're gonna see all the plugins from 1 through 5 and of course 4 and 3 is RCP and JRCP2 and of course the very first one which is the XBDM for the neighborhood this is what the plugins consist of it's all depending on whatever mod menu or stealth server ask for you to use on there as a plugin. Now let's go ahead and just pick something out random. I can go ahead and press A on the XBDM or the very first plugin and I can just scroll down here and pick whatever one I like. Of course I already know what a lot of these are and what they do, what is a still server, what's a mod menu and what is a plugin. That's because I just have knowledge of some of the things and I just happen to know what is what and of course the name of the file gives it away as well but you know sometimes they're not exactly named correctly or they just named a little bit different so anyway once you're ready you can go ahead and press RB go down to HDD press X and then press A and then turn off your Xbox now just go ahead and repower it back on and of course wait for it to go to the dashboard once it's booted of course you can see that Direct Live is connected and now I can go ahead and use any of my profiles to sign in. Now I'm pretty sure you've noticed that I had a mod menu set up which was called Appendium. 
Now this mod menu can either pop up on here or it can pop up once I start playing the game. And it's just random just whenever it connects to the server. So now let's go ahead and jump into a game. I'll quickly choose just Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Go ahead and just let it boot. Then I go to multiple player. And here we are. Now I have two different mod menus running, Matrix and Appendium. They both work really well with each other and I haven't had any issues with them. But uh, in case you want to get them, I will leave uh, the videos down in the description for you to download them if you like to. If you have gotten up to this point, you're pretty much done. The only thing left to teach you would be to switch your KV, um, maybe download some games off the internet, do some uh, ROM emulation or play some classic games like the N64, NES, SNES, and of course setting up neighborhood. But I think it's getting to a pretty long video so I'll go ahead and end it here and if you would like to I can go ahead and do part 3 in the future. So anyway, I want to say thank you to every single person that has recently been subscribing to my channel the people that I've been playing with online streamed and I did promise that I was gonna play some Modern Warfare for the Xbox One and I have I have been playing it I've been playing story mode and I've been having fun with my friends and I haven't uploaded a video about it yet because um, I don't want to milk it and it's kind of dull because it's it's kind of like the old uh, Modern Warfare games but anyway um, I hope this video and tutorial was helpful. Like I said, look out for part 3 because I will be making it pretty soon. So anyway, thank you guys so very much for watching. This was Captain J and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.